Well, last night we had a physical access window that we put in place, and I brought four wireless access points with us that we configured up to be on the internal network segment of each team. Uh, and then from there, today, I'm logged in on the inside. Uh, and what that basically does is give us full internal access to their network space by completely bypassing the firewalls and the other perimeter security devices that they already have configured. Um, so we came in this morning, uh, found a, a USB key that wasn't ours. So right now I'm doing analysis to find out what was on the key uh, and uh, filling out an incident response report so we can hopefully uh, get law enforcement involved and, and get some points back here. We had a two-phase approach. Really what we ended up doing was um, providing some weaponized thumb drives, uh, providing them out there, no inject, just trying to use the uh, curiosity as a weapon, so to speak. The idea was if they were to insert the thumb drives, it would automatically install a rootkit. There was some other just benign files in there that would add no value to them, but just by placing it into the system, we actually had it so it would phone me home. Worked out pretty good. We had a suspicious flash drive we found laying around, and uh, we're checking that out right now just to see if there's anything on it bad so we can fill out an instant response form about it. Uh, the Windows logging system that logs all the events is currently turned off. I did not turn it off, so uh, that would have actually logged if something happened. So maybe one of my guesses may, might be that they turned it off and so I can't see what happened in the meantime. Could be, I'm not sure at this point. The other phase of it was really going into the boxes Doing something in a real-world environment, how would be someone having access to a box? It's the toughest piece. You can do all this logical security and all the technology pieces, but if someone can get to the physical box, you're always going to have problems. So it looks like someone did, might have done something nasty to our machine overnight. It looked almost like someone plugged something in this computer because there's errors about media removal. Before we started yesterday, I went around and... Uh, put four of these MP3 players with microphones in them, taped them under the tables, and put them in record mode. And last night we went around and collected uh, some of them. Two of them, the teams found. And uh, actually one of them, Casey, just brought it back out to me. And it still has a live recording on it. So I'm listening to the information now to see if I can pick anything up from it. I'm rebooting this machine because I'm having a little trouble with this terminal. They're a little bit tighter today. Actually, I would say a lot tighter today. So we're really trying to um, get our hands around what's left and try to hit the services that we know that they can't block us from a firewall perspective. Since they have injects and they have to keep certain services running, we're looking at those services and trying to find vulnerabilities in those. So I'm 1002. You're 1002. He's 2002. There's 3001. Pretty much everything started uh, about a month ago. We'd. Uh, Everybody had gotten together and we were talking about what we were going to accomplish or what things we were hoping to do. And I, I decided to team up with Mike to work on the PBX system. We should be able to do two lines because we have two extensions here. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll work on that next. We changed the trunks around a little bit and then we changed the routes for the teams. So we rerouted all the team calls to RPBX, and then RPBX pushed it out to phones that we had set up, uh, or software clients that we had set up on different laptops. Web server file structure set up? Is it yeah, slash, right here. Is it, what is it, slash bar, bar slash? Did the main PBX go down? I'm writing a file, so I need to the All the circuits we hijacked are dead. Well, we've been working at scanning the different host. I've worked with the phone guys a little bit right here, having some problems getting that working. Um, some of the systems out there have, uh, and there's, there's an extra router that really isn't needed. And some of the systems haven't found that yet. So I've been able to use that to jump around their firewall and get in on the inside of the network. Can you answer? So team three is still alive. What happened to team one, two? Let's find out. Uh, right now, I'm checking our phone system. Uh, we have a problem with one of the phones. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with it. Yeah, that's us. There we go. All right, we're fine. Yeah, we hung up. We have a PBX for each team. We have a gray zone PBX that is basically the main trunk. And then white cell and red cell have their own PBX. So we realized we couldn't get to the PBX for each team because they secured the boxes. So since the gray zone is within scope of the game, we attacked the gray zone and hacked the account there. Your call cannot be received. Please 
Oh, what is going on now? All right, is your client on? 2002, not 2001. You gotta remember your numbers. All right. There he is. So we got three working, the floor's still dead. We cut off all the teams. The teams never receive any calls, we receive all the calls. So basically we go from the white cell to the gray zone, from the gray zone right back to us. It would never spread out to the teams. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll let you know if we uh, can fix it. Okay. All right, have a good Very one. Good. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> we just started intercepting calls as phones rang. So we got a call from the CEO, Paul, uh, asking us if we followed up on our instant response uh, about the asterisk box going down. Um, I told them at the current time we were, we were not able to gather enough information for a proper incident report and the FBI would not be willing to help us until we could. Paul Curry. So we waited a little bit and we thought about what else we can do based on that conversation. And we decided we'll call Paul back and say that it was an insider that did it and that we have proof. We had video logs and uh, uh, system logs saying that Dennis uh, basically hacked the box. Okay, I will be down in uh, less than a minute. Very good, thank you. Uh, Richard, I was just speaking to you on the phone and you were telling me about Dennis. You're one of your team members, Dennis. No, it's not, I didn't, I did not call. So you did not call? No. Well, now I'm really concerned because I just thought I was listening to you on the phone explaining to me, in fact, I have security here to usher Dennis out. We always have all these grand plans as we come in here, what we want to attack, how we want to attack it. And once we get in there, we become so sidetracked just because how easy everything has been. So no calls came from you, so so now I'm, I'm fearful of our system mm -hmm. and our phone system. We we're pretty much rebuilding what we have right now. Um, we're going through a crisis stage right now. Um, everything was pretty much down for a second, including our phones. It's not only is the system down and sabotaging people entering it, but the phone system's down. So somebody can call in from anywhere impersonating someone. So there's uh, some real legal issues with that. 10.6881103 allowed into our network. It should so be, can... it should be, okay. As long as the competition continues to evolve the security landscape to something that is realistically comparable to what's out there during that current time, I think the contest will benefit everyone in that respect. Last year, they didn't introduce VoIP systems until the regional competition, and this year we had them in the qualifiers and the regional. Uh, and that's a very real thing that most companies are, are getting into these days, the voice over IP, IP phones, that's something that most large enterprise companies have considered going to if they haven't already transitioned to it. So that the fact that the students have to interact with that and manage those systems now is representative of current technology. Rick, how are we looking? Oh, we're getting close. All right, so, you know, it's not much we can really do but just keep working at it, you know, just don't, just don't over, you know, stress about it, you know, because that's not really helpful. We are able to reroute a couple calls here and there. Um, and then pretty much we were told after, uh, after lunch, no more calls, forget it, drop it, no more. So then we, we went on to try and do a couple other little things behind everybody's back, so. Hopefully, once we get this working, we're gonna have something that he wrote that will basically turn the phones into speaker phones so we can start paging people. I know exactly how they did it. Um, it just was amusing to me at the time, but it's it's just another issue that we have to work on. We should be we should have that locked down by now. So we discovered that PHP admin wasn't protected. There was no username and password on it. So we added our own account to it, and then using the account that we added, we then able, had the ability to execute system commands. So we use assistant command to create a PHP file that had a backdoor in it. And using the backdoor, we set up a netcat listener, which is like another backdoor on the TCP side. And then using that, we connected from core over to the netcat listener and uploaded a core agent, which now gives us shell access. And now we're attempting to gain, escalate our privileges up to root level, so then we can have full control of the system. Got on that? <laughs>